It's beginning to look a lot like Advent. Do, do, do. Hmm. I wonder if this thing's on. Do, do, do. Our big goal is happiness in this life and heaven in the next. To achieve this, we need to stay close to God throughout each day. But how do we do that while living in the real world with all of its challenges and distractions? Growing our interior life through Christian mental prayer is the answer. This podcast mines the riches of the greatest spiritual tradition on earth so we can grow in holiness together. I'm Steve Smith. Thank you for joining me for Pearls of the Interior Life. Welcome to this week's Pearls of the Interior Life. Thank you, as always, for making this time for the Lord. Always so good to be a part of that with you. Thank you for that as well. So, Advent, right around the corner, a uh, little over a week away. As always, you know, every year, Labor Day comes, school starts up, right? And then, boom, it's Halloween. Boom, it's Thanksgiving. Boom, Christmas and New Year's. Bang, 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 down it goes. And uh, no different this year. Here we are, Advent, right around the corner. And that means this Sunday, we celebrate Christ, the King of the universe. We're going to see that two things have quite a bit in common. So we want to look at at our, our Sabbath, our feast day, the Solemnity of Christ the King, as always. So we're preparing ourselves to make the most of that this weekend. And also then looking at how we'll carry that through into the week ahead. And again, it turns out that it is a wonderful way to set up our preparation for Advent. How do we want to spend this Advent growing our spiritual life? So those are the two things that we're going to see. Christ the King, the, the reading comes from the end of John. And, you know, we've been walking up in ordinary time, preparing for Lent. We've been following Christ and his public ministry, walking through uh, the Gospels. And now we come right up to the end of things, right up to his passion. And the reading that we're going to have is John when he's there with Pilate. And you know, Pilate, you know, are you a king? What is this about? Why are you here? And mostly Pilate, how do I wash my hands of all this and get out of this mess? And we have all of salvation history really coming right to a point. And this is where the scripture is so rich. The scripture is always rich. It is always the living word of God. But there is a, a very specific drama to the passion narratives, because now we have all of salvation history coming, condensing down to this one point. We've talked about this before. It's like the Big Bang, where everything comes down to a point and then explodes forth with the resurrection and the founding of the church and so on. And that's what is about to happen. But first, we have this exchange of Christ. And Pilate, it's brief, let's just look at it. Pilate saying to Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answers, do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answers, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation, the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answers, my kingdom does not belong to this world. My kingdom did belong to this world. My attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. And Jesus answers, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. That is the reading for this Sunday. Obviously, that then follows with that, that um, infamous one-liner from Pilate. What is truth? There's a line. <laughs> There's a motto for our society today, by the way, what is truth? But that's a different matter. Okay, there's so you know, much in this passage. You could spend for a lifetime you know, really just contemplating this passage. Every single phrase, every statement, Christ, you know, here's one, for this I was born, for this I came into the world. What is there? Echoes the hypostatic union. Christ as human, Christ as divine, for this I was born, Christ in his humanity. For this I came into the world, Christ and his divinity it simply comes into the world. We can go on and on. But for this week's pearls, we want to focus on this one statement. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Everyone who belongs to the truth 
listens to my voice and this belongs you know it's again not belonging here you know, just like property you know this belongs to me or belonging you know, you know joining in with something joining a club i belong to the rotary club or so on no this is a much different type of one this is giving yourself over to for example you know, in the concept of of our vocations and vows holy orders or marital vows or consecrations it's that kind of belonging you're getting more to the heart of it in the original Greek. It's probably simply the word of, of everyone who is of the truth. And it's of meaning place of origin. So in other words, everyone whose place of origin is the truth listens to my voice. Everyone whose place of origin. Again, you could contemplate on this for quite some time. You know, Christ being truth itself. And we're made in for and through him, we are of the truth. We were literally created by Christ. We were created by truth. So everyone who is of truth listens to my voice. And what Christ is really getting at here is the preemptive work of faith that everything initiates from faith in God, receiving that and acting on it. Here's what St. Augustine says about this line. A man then is not of the truth because he hears Christ's voice, but hears Christ's voice because he is of the truth. This grace is conferred on him by the truth, by Christ. So see, see the important ordering things here. A man is not of the truth because he hears Christ's voice. No, we're able to hear Christ's voice because we are of the truth we are of christ and this is this point it's always god's initiative always god's initiative and because we are of christ then we can hear the truth god makes that first move with that gift of faith now the key there is always that we then we have to do the listening and we have to act on it. we have to respond we have to let that grow in us but it's always that initiative by God. And so there's a bit of mystery there. You know, not everyone at any given point in time is called. Look at Pilate. Look at Pilate. Truth is right there with him. He doesn't hear. He's darting in and out of his chambers. He's just trying to figure out how to get this monkey off his back. He has his wife telling him I have nothing to do with this man. He has the priest calling for blood and telling him there's going to be a riot if he doesn't execute. Christ, and now he has Christ himself right there, this enigmatic figure who's given him nothing to work with. And all he's thinking about again is, how do I get out of this mess? And so he's not listening. He asks Jesus, are you a king? And Jesus says, not of this world, as it is, my kingdom is not here. And then Pilate still goes, oh, so you're a king. You know, giving him the benefit of the doubt, maybe he thought Christ was speaking figuratively. You know, I'm not of this world. Like, I, I'm not a king of this region. I'm somewhere from the east or from the south. But come on, that's not it. Pilate just isn't even listening. He's not processing. You're not of this world. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, so you're saying you're a king. <laughs> All right. So he's just saying, how does this advance my agenda of getting out of this mess? He's not listening. I can think of years of my life when I wasn't listening, when, you, when you'd go to church and hear the same scriptures and none of it meant a thing. And then finally, there was that moment of conversion, that beginning of baptism in the spirit, uh, you know, call it what you will, and suddenly everything is open. Right now, it's real, and so it is with you. That's why you're here spending this time growing in holiness seeking a closer relationship with the Lord. And that is what we want to hone in on in this passage. He says, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Everyone who belongs to me listens to my voice. My sheep hear my voice. They know the voice of their master. And that's what we want to be doing. We want to be listening. We want to listen ever more closely, ever more attentively, ever more diligently to those promptings. And how? How do we listen? When do we listen? Well, all the time, obviously. But 
at interior life because it is the tradition and teaching of the church and the great mystics. First and foremost, we listen in Christian med meditation, in mental prayer, in that time of silent prayer, sacred, sacred silence with the Lord. So what can we be doing about that, this avenue? Because that's what this passage is telling us. Christ, the king of the universe, he says he's a king. His king just is not just some pathetic little worldly domain. Mm -mm, far from it. His, his real kingdom is, is our spiritual soul. That's where he desires to be king, and that's where we have to listen to him. He's telling us right here and now, I want you to listen to me. Spend time with me. Enter into my kingdom. Okay, so what are some concrete ways we can do that for Advent? Because Advent, another penitential season. So we, just like with Lent, we want to spend time in prayer, also in fasting and in almsgiving. But how do we grow a prayer? Here are some very simple, practical things that may apply to you depending on where you are in your prayer life. One, just frequency. We, we want to get to the point where we are praying every day, praying in mental prayer, quiet, um, silent prayer, meditating typically on the scriptures, especially the gospels. But there are many approaches, but that silent meditative prayer, ideally each day. If you're not praying each day right now, well, outstanding. <laughs> Here's Advent. Great time to just incrementally, if roughly four weeks of Advent, what's the plan? Just move steadily ahead. So at the end of Advent, we're now up to praying each day. And, uh, and, and thinking through it very methodically, we'll come back to that at the very end. The amount of time. The spiritual masters recommend at least 20 minutes. And especially in this day and age, just because it takes so much time just to kind of get the noise and the baloney out of your system. So that seems to be something of the consensus they're working towards 20 minutes. If you're doing that already, great. Add a little bit more. If you're not there, let's say you're at 10 minutes. Right? We have four weeks. So in week one, increase to 12. Just two extra minutes. Week two, make the big leap to 15 minutes. Week three, 17 minutes. And then week four, 20. There we go. The important thing, though, is never backsliding. As we probably talked about before, backsliding in the spiritual life, very bad. Because you have three things working against you, your own fallen nature, the world, and the enemy, Satan and his minions. So when you start to backslide, all of that comes in with that you know, negative Nelly voice. Mm -hmm. you know, see, you were never good enough anyway, that kind of stuff. So the most important thing is to set uh, goals for Advent that are achievable, realistic. Maybe it's just going from 10 minutes to 15 minutes. You want to get to the end of Advent, seven days a week, 15 minutes. Perfect. The quality. Um, maybe you're already right there. I'm praying every day. I'm doing a half hour every day. That's about right. Okay, well, let's go deeper then. How? Well, uh, getting rid of the noise. If there's still a fair amount of noise in your life, especially you know through these little soul-sucking devices, I don't have mine right near me now, but that we all carry around, you know, get rid of it. Take a hammer to it. All right, you probably can't do that, but reduce the time on it or the places that you go to, the things that tend to add to our distraction, take our imagination bad directions. Y you know what those things are, but getting uh, rid of those things that prevent us from going deeper and then find ways to go deeper. Great spiritual reading. Go to some of the classics, things that you uh, haven't read yet. Just pull up, you could find lists of spiritual classics just about everywhere, be it one of the philosophical classics, the lives of the saints, Augustine's confessions. Here's a uh, never fail. Get a good Bible commentary. Uh, the St. Augustine version, the New Testament with Scott Hans notes, very good. The Navarre Bible commentary, outstanding. Uh, the Tena Orea, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, St. Thomas Aquinas's um, Bible commentary that he culled from the masters that came before him. A, a good Bible commentary will go so far to opening up your time in meditation, uh, giving you different things to bring to the Lord in conversation. So there are some practical steps that we can be thinking. You can come up with many more, I'm sure, of just ways uh, devotions, another beautiful way 
keeping your devotion to Mary, keeping your devotion to particular saints, especially some of the great mystics, Saint Teresa of Avila, Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, Saint John of the Cross, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and on and on. Alphonsus the Glory, he has uh, marvelous, marvelous uh, writings on deepening our faith life. But just picking one thing, just one simple thing, what's going to be that focus for Advent to help draw deeper into that listening, into that listening that Christ says we're all called to. We're all called to. Once, once we have that moment of conversion, once we recognize He truly is King, He is the truth. He is who created us. He is who desires the highest and best things for us, especially to be reunited with Him and the Father and His Spirit and all the saints and angels in heaven great time to listen to that a little bit more. So wishing you a wonderful week ahead and be praying for that inspiration and always pray for the grace when we do these things, these times of preparation. You know, Lord, guide me. What do you desire for me this Advent, Lord? How do you desire to draw me closer to you this Advent? And with great confidence then that, that he will guide you in the perfect Advent for you. And I look forward to being with you again.